Welcome back to Morning Trade Live. Let's talk some macro and get into the mind of John Kosar joining us from Asbury Research. He's a chief strategist, home of the Asbury Six Indicators. And John, uh, looks like, again, you guys were on the right path when the last few times we spoke, you were describing things as looking positive with the potential for new highs. We are there in the NASDAQ. What does that mean to you? Well, five of the six Asbury Six are still are still green, they're still positive. That means the market is still in, in terms of internals, it's still healthy. Uh, there are a couple of those, I don't remember which ones exactly, that could be starting to show some signs that they're faltering a little bit. But um, the A6 has been green um, since November the 2nd. The market's up 10% since then. And uh, I don't fade this metric. Uh, this metric tells me day to day what, what the health is um, of the market inside. We're looking at stuff like the asset flows that are going into the spider, which I'll talk about a little bit more if you'd like me to. Um, market breadth, volume, stuff of that nature that um, gives you, I think, a much more accurate understanding of, you know, despite all the hand wringing um, that goes on every day, kind of what the market's feeling. And that's been positive since the beginning of November. The rate of change, the only one on the Asbury 6 being red. How come that is, John? What does that measure? That's just the rate of change um, in the S&P 500. It's a 21-day rate of change. So um, a lot of that is mechanical. It depends on what happens to drop off for the last couple of days. So, um, and not, um, we did this, um, purposefully, it's the only one of the six that has to do directly with the S&P 500 um, because we were trying to get away from watching the S&P every day. It's up 50 today, it's down 70 tomorrow. So that's the only one that really has to do specifically with the S&P 500. The other ones can't be moved around you know, by the day-to-day -day -day gyrations that we see in a lot of the major indexes. Those are the more important ones to me, frankly, and those are all still green. Okay. All right. So what then could uh, show up as, as a weakness, as an opening? I mean, last time we talked, it was the market pretty reliably trading inverse to yields. But now we've had this big, big bond rally. So, like, what's the threat? Is there anything out there, John, that looks like it's spooky? Oh, sure. Um, yeah. Sent you a couple of uh, charts this morning. Sentiment um, is too bullish. Ah. That's one issue. Um, standard deviation has gotten out of whack. The market has kind of moved out of bounds in terms of its normal range. Mm. Um, that's another one. Um, market breadth on a short-term basis has gotten pretty frothy. So all of those suggest that we're getting into an environment that's looking a lot like we did at the end of July. Um, but that doesn't mean to sell. That just shows you that we're kind of getting out over our skis a little bit in terms of the market. This is the percentage of NYSE stocks trading above their 40 day moving average. You can see on the lower right, it's up above 71%. The last one, two, three, four, five, six times that's happened in downtrends and uptrends alike, that was within a few weeks of a top. But again, this is not a trigger for me to sell. The Asbury 6 needs to go four or more. You have to turn negative or red for that to happen. But this is telling me that we're probably somewhere close to a near-term tactical top, which could be anywhere from several weeks to a couple of months in terms of the duration of that top. And that's something you look for other signs of confirmation. You don't just try and time that because the sentiment is elevated. That's your point. Yeah, you can't, um, as long as the internals of the market are still strong, as long as the market is still not feeling any fear, I mean, we could go up and take a run at the all-time high. That was 48, uh, 48 19. Uh, that's the next big, you know, that's the next big level upstairs. There's really nothing else there. The other thing that we're watching is we're watching volatility. Um, volatility is often the first thing, the first indication that you're going to see that the market is getting a little bit uncomfortable being as high as it is. So what we have here, 
This is the VIX down on the bottom. This is daily going back to August with the S&P 500 on top. So what this is showing is that since the end of October, and remember the Asbury 6 flipped a few days later on November the 2nd, turned to positive, but through the end of October, the VIX fell down through its 21 day moving average. What does that mean? It means that on a monthly basis, the market was getting more complacent. It was getting more fearless. If we move through there, that 21 day moving average, and currently it's at 1278. You see that in the lower right corner. If we can make a steady move in the VIX above there, like we did in between September 20th and October 30th, you see that in the lower middle part of the chart, that was a driver for the market moving down into the October, uh, October lows. October 27th, I believe, was that low. So that's something that I'm looking at every day that would be the first domino to flip, so to speak. If we can get the VIX over 13, have it stay there, indicates the market's getting a little bit more a little bit more nervous about going so far so fast then we should see some kind of a one by one kind of a turn to red in the asbury six and now you've got reasons to start to take some chips off the table here i mean if you've been long since november you've had a really nice fourth quarter what you have to be careful of now is that you're not the last guy off the train here. So that's why we're watching some of these short term. You know, we've already gotten out of some of our ideas that have paid off very well. Um, banks, regional banks, we had bought those two or three weeks ago and we had 20 percent um, up moves in three weeks. So we already took the money on those. Somewhere in here is a top. Um, it's not here yet, but I think we're getting close like the things to look for uh is to know when that might be happening but the key point right now is that they haven't <laughs> so you're just uh in the you know we're in the kind of mindset of being aware but not trying to you know fight the tape too much to your point about the banks and some of the groups that really sprung back so hard that seems like a conversation separate almost from like the tech driven NASDAQ record and more about the rotation that took place here. Do you view some of those trades in the last month as being dependent on what happens next year macro wise, John? Do, do you think about that? Uh, because there was like, you know, the tech trade that worked for a while and then it was like all the other stuff that joined in the last yeah. month and a half. And that's kind of what made the difference, it seems like. We are so completely data driven here that I try not to get too far ahead of myself and figuring out what might happen yeah. or what the Fed might say or what the elections might bring. All I'm doing is watching the money moving around the board. I'm watching for sentiment to get too frothy, um, you know, or get too negative. We're looking at market breath, um, all of those individual metrics will tell me really what I want to know. And that's, it doesn't matter what I think is going to happen. It matters what the market thinks is going to happen or what the market's going to think of, you know, we've got uh, a PCE coming out Friday. So I'm not going to be trying to analyze what I think that number might be, but rather the market's reaction to that. And you could see that in the VIX and you could see it in asset flows. You could see it in market breadth. So yeah, we're just focused on how the market's reacting to the data rather than trying to make our own projections on what the data might be. True. Okay. John, always a useful conversation. Thank you very much for your time. Happy holidays. Good to see you. Yeah, absolutely. Likewise. And uh, nice job sticking with the tactical indicators and being long at the right time. John Kosar at Asbury Research coming up.